Hi guys, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist and much as I promised that I was going to try and put a video out every Saturday, here is my offering for today. Today I wanted to do a little video to help you understand the concept of blood pressure. Now blood pressure is uh, pretty, one in three people have high blood pressure. Uh, having high blood pressure substantially increases the risk of heart disease, kidney disease, strokes and blood pressure is an epidemic in the western world and it causes a great deal of anxiety amongst patients you know people are obsessed with the blood pressure and measuring numbers etc and very few people really understand the concept of blood pressure so i thought i'd go back back to basic physics and try and explain blood pressure in a way that you can understand all right so the first thing to understand try and work out is what is pressure now going back to basic physics pressure is generated by applying force over a certain amount of area okay so the formula for pressure is force over area pressure is directly proportional to the amount of force that is applied and inversely proportional to the area that that force is applied on all right so think of a thumbtack all right if the thumbtack is sharp and apply and I apply a layer of uh, I apply force on the thumbtack I can push the thumbtack into the wall if the thumbtack is blunt okay so the area is greater as opposed to a very sharp thumbtack where there's very little area if the area is greater because the thumbtack is blunt and apply the and I apply the same amount of force I would not be able to push that thumbtack into the wall and that is because I'm not able to generate as much pressure all right and that is the simple concept of pressure now when we talk about blood pressure what we're talking about is the amount of pressure that is generated when blood is pumped out into our blood vessels that's bluebell anyway now when our hearts pump out blood the force that is generated by how much blood is pumped out and how uh, the force is generated by how much blood is pumped out and how quickly it's pumped out i.e. our heart rate okay that the area that that force is exerted over is the total area for all our blood vessels if the area is small then the pressure will increase if the area is large then the pressure will decrease all right our blood vessels have an additional very important property and this property is what allows our blood pressure not to go too high. Our arteries, our blood vessels are stretchy. They're inherently stretchy. So when we're pumping more blood out of our hearts, i.e. increasing the amount of force that is being applied, our arteries stretch and therefore the area over which this force is applied gets bigger and therefore our pressure doesn't go up too high. All right? Now compare this to a balloon, for example, and a hot water bottle, all right? If I blew air in this balloon, uh, the pressure in the balloon would be much lower for the same amount of air that I've blown in compared to if I blew the same amount of air in this hot water bottle because the hot water bottle is not as stretchy as the balloon. Now, one of the biggest reasons why so many people develop high blood pressure is because, in essence, their arteries get harder over a period of time and therefore their blood vessels lose that stretchiness and become more like the hot water bottle compared to as opposed to the balloon this is how god intended them to be but as time progresses our blood vessels become like this hot water bottle so for whatever amount of force you're applying the pressure goes up significantly higher because the blood vessels are no longer as stretchy all right now Imagine if a person with nice stretchy blood vessels suddenly increased their heart rate. Okay, if I'm walking along in the middle of the night, someone jumps out at me, my heart rate will go up immediately, really, you know, go up because of all the adrenaline, etc. And my blood pressure will rise because the amount, the force with which the blood is coming out has gone up. But because our blood vessels are stretchy, that pressure won't go won't go up excessively high and secondly won't stay excessively high it'll come down because our blood vessels will stretch to accommodate this extra volume and therefore the pressure won't be so high however if someone who has hardened blood vessels who has lost that stretchiness 
uh, goes out walking and someone scares him, the heart rate will go high and the blood pressure will go up many fold simply because all there's there's no stretchiness left and therefore the heart rate and how much blood is coming out, that force is dictating the pressure. All right. The problem with exposing your blood vessels to excessively high pressure is simply this, that the, particularly the very small blood vessels, which actually are what gets the blood to our brain, to our heart, to our kidneys, to our eyes, those are the tiny, tiny blood vessels. If they're exposed to high blood pressure over a long period of time, A, they also lose their stretchiness, B, they can burst, C, they can narrow, and consequently, that means that they can interfere with blood getting to our vital organs. And therefore, tiny, tiny blood cells, uh, tiny cells in our vital organs start suffocating because they're not getting the blood because of small blood vessels have been affected because of this high blood pressure over a long period of time. And this is the mechanism by which people develop strokes. Some people develop dementia as a result of that. And lots of people develop kidney problems, eye problems, simply because of this very thing, okay? Um, <clears throat> And that's how high blood pressure affects our vital organs. There are three values you need to remember when it comes to pressure. The first is something called the systolic blood pressure. Now, the systolic blood pressure is the highest pressure in our blood vessels. Okay, So when I feel my pulse over here and you feel the pulse, you know, what hits your fingers over there, that's your systolic blood pressure that's generating that. Systolic blood pressure is when blood is being pumped out of the heart, that exists the highest amount of pressure on the blood vessels, that's the systolic blood pressure. The diastolic blood pressure is when the heart is relaxing, so it's not pumping blood out. In fact, it's filling with blood, so no blood is being pumped out. So that's the lowest pressure in our blood vessels. And then the pulse pressure is the difference between the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure. And I'll explain to you about the pulse pressure on a later video, because someone has asked me to do that. So, <clears throat> So I, th I hope that makes you understand a little bit about blood pressure. Of all patients with high blood pressure, 5% of patients, and particularly young patients, have something called secondary hypertension. Hypertension meaning blood pressure, secondary high blood pressure, which means that the blood pressure is caused by another condition. And if that other condition is treated, then the blood pressure just gets better of its own accord. And I'll do a video on causes of secondary hypertension. This is particularly important for young people. You know, if you're a young person and you go to the GP and GP says, oh, you've got high blood pressure, don't let him treat you with tablets without making sure you don't have a secondary cause for this hypertension, that there's nothing else going on which is causing your blood pressure, because simply treating that underlying cause will get rid of the blood pressure. However, for most people, the high blood pressure is a sign rather than a disease. And the disease is actually hardening of the blood vessels, which is usually caused either by age or bad lifestyle, or possibly in a very small proportion of patients, genetics. Okay. Problem is that most hardening is caused over a number of years. And the blood pressure is usually found to be high only after most of the damage is done. And most healthcare professionals these days seem to be only interested in patients when the blood pressure is consistently high. Uh, not recognizing, firstly, that they could have prevented that from happening by giving the patient good lifestyle advice at a younger age. And secondly, that by simply treating the numbers, you see, so they measure your blood pressure, they say, oh, it's high, let's give you some tablets. Now, everyone thinks, oh, as soon as you start having tablets, they say, oh, actually, my blood pressure is now normal. Actually, what they've done is they've not taken away the underlying problem. They've simply made the numbers better. Okay, how do they make the numbers better? They make the numbers better by reducing the heart rate. But the heart rate wasn't the problem. It's the stretchiness of the blood vessels. They reduce the numbers by giving people diuretics, which makes them a little bit more dry, and therefore there's not as much blood coming out of the heart. They make people uh, take tablets which open up the blood vessels. But those blood vessels, although they're open, they've not become more stretchy, and therefore you haven't taken the problem away. Okay, And the truth is you can't take the problem away by the time the high blood pressure has been diagnosed. But the idea that... Um, you just give tablets to get the numbers better without addressing the underlying factors is um, is wrong to my mind. And so, 
And that's why it's not surprising that when people get given tablets, the blood pressure gets better, everyone feels happy, or we're controlling the blood pressure, the patient doesn't change their lifestyle. A few months later, the patient needs an additional tablet, okay, because the blood pressure goes up again, because you haven't, <laughs> you haven't taken the underlying problem away. So, as time progresses, people with high blood pressure need more and more and more tablets to keep the blood pressure down because the underlying problem hasn't been taken away and people are just masking the numbers. So here are some lifestyle tips which I think will help in a big way. Firstly, to stop you from developing hardening of your blood vessels, which will then manifest as high blood pressure. Or secondly, to reduce your likelihood of your blood pressure getting worse over a period of time. And that is, number one, diet, okay? Avoid processed food. Eat less, avoid processed food. If you can do that, that's a really, really good idea. I, to my mind, a large part of this is processing in the food. Sometimes also, um, I think vegetarian diets are better. Um, also, remember that we don't take in as much magnesium anymore in our blood. Uh, we don't take as much magnesium in our diet as we should, and taking magnesium helps in a big way. All right, it'll bring your blood pressure down slightly. It'll bring your blood pressure down, not hugely, but it will certainly help. All right, and therefore it's very important to pay attention to diet. Secondly, being hydrated is really good. We know that dehydration is very inflammatory to the body. A lot of people are dehydrated these days. They're taking diuretics, um, you know, they're drinking excessive amounts of coffee, juices, carbonated drinks, and beer, alcohol. Being dehydrated is a problem. Being hydrated with water at all times is a really good idea, all right, because water is an anti-inflammatory. Regular exercise is really, really important. People who have high blood pressure, if you're overweight, you've been diagnosed with high blood pressure, just because someone is giving you tablets and the numbers look better doesn't mean you've sorted the problem out. Get some exercise. 30 minutes uh, of you know, a brisk walk on a treadmill every day is very, very good, and it'll lower your blood pressure in a big way, and you'll feel better, and your likelihood of your blood pressure getting worse over time will be reduced. Okay, and it reduces your risk, so really important. Sleep is a really important part. If you have insomnia, get that seen to. If you suffer from sleep apnea, get that addressed, because if you can address your sleep, your blood pressure will automatically come down. And finally, stress relief. So doing things like relaxation, mindfulness, hypnosis, meditation, yoga, these are all really, really good things, because stress causes high blood pressure. Okay, um, if you ever get a chance, look up Cushing syndrome on the internet. That is a condition where you're releasing too much stress hormone, and virtually everyone who's got lots of stress hormone will develop diabetes, will develop high blood pressure. So that's another reason it's really, really important to be mindful of stress and minimizing your stress if you can. And I know how difficult it is to do that. Uh, but these are just some tips, okay? And even if you have been found to have high blood pressure, it is vital to remember that you must modify your lifestyle because that is what is going to address the underlying problem, not simply taking lots of medications. So I hope this was useful for you. Uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist. I very, very, very much value all your kind words, um, all the nice things you say. It makes it all worthwhile. If you have some time, do come and visit me on my Facebook page. Uh, if you do feel that this was a useful um, thing, then um, a useful video, then please do share it. This is Bluebell who's making, um, <laughs> yeah, who wants my attention. So thank you so much. All the best and take care. Bye.